so I am on a impromptu Goodwill trip with my child. I've raised my child right. They asked me today if we can go thrifty, and I'm like, yeah. And I was like, what are you, what are you looking for? And they're like, um, stuffy animals. I'm like, well, let's go to the Goodwill outlet. AKA the Goodwill bin. So that's where we are. The reason why my eyes are wandering everywhere is because I'm seeing people get out of their car to go line up at the Goodwill outlet. I've never seen this before, but I've never gotten here when they open. So yeah, I'm going to take you through. If you guys have never been to a Goodwill outlet, it's definitely a, a fun place to pick through. Kind of dirty, but it's fun. There are two Goodwill outlets that I know of in the St. Louis area. I am in the one in Bridgeton, which is not that far from where I live. So it's kind of inconvenient enough that I don't come here that often. It's been a while since I have been here, but the things that I'm going to be looking for again are quality fabrics. I'm looking for my wools, my cashmere, my silk. You know, I'm a little bougie when it comes to that. You never know what you're going to find when you come to the Goodwill outlet. Let's go ahead and go. I guess I should probably go and line up with the rest of the people. <laughs> But I'm so frustrated Hello to my loneliness I guess that ignorance is bliss Take me back to before the noon Rewind, take it out of cue Innocence can be a young man's game Signed up for the Hall of Shame I wish I knew How much I miss The next day that was an experience it has been some time since I've actually gone to the Goodwill outlets I think the last time me and my child went to the Goodwill outlet was before the pandemic happened so a good at least three years since I've been and I forgot like how overwhelming it can be and sometimes how claustrophobic it can be and just I'm a little self-conscious getting footage in there so I did take some footage but not as much as I want to the amount of tweed that I wanted to rescue, friends that love tweed or my friends that can repurpose tweed or wool, there is a lot to be had at the bins. And I'm about to show you my haul. I did edit it down. I probably could have edited it down more, but there were some things that I just really, really wanted. But I'm excited to share with you. The majority of them are natural fiber clothing. Oh, let me tell you the stats though before. So I got a total of 21 items. So if you don't know, the, the way that you pay at the Goodwill Atlas is that they you pay by weight. The books and heavier items, they're like a flat fee. So I got one heavy item, but the rest of the stuff was by weight. So my total weight when I went to go check out was 19 pounds and eight ounces. The price at my Goodwill outlet is $1.89 a pound, which it has gone up since the last, I think the last time I went there, I think it was 90, still 99 cents a pound. My total was $47.42, but one of my items was a heavyweight item, so they didn't weigh that, so I paid $10 for that. So all of my weighted items, I paid $37.42. I got 20 items of that. So if I broke it down per item, I paid $1.87 per item. I am going to start off with the non-wearable things and then work my way there. So my first thing is up. I couldn't pass this guy up. I'm a collector of knickknacks. He just reminds me of my grandma or my mom and I think it'll be cute with a little display. My next item that's up is kind of silly that I got it, but it was just kind of too cool to pass up. And I honestly, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I think I'm going to wear it to the next Renaissance Fair, but I am a sucker for leather stuff. It is a beat up old leather work belt. But to me, I mean, I could put other stuff, you know, I can put my phone in here. I could put like my little 
um, apothecary things if I want to be a little a little apothecary person going to the Renaissance Fair but couldn't pass it up. Sucker for a leather thing. I am collecting leather because I want to actually teach myself how to do leather work. Every year when I go to our local Renaissance Fair I always go into the leather shop and I'm like, oh, I wish I could get these. I wish I could justify getting these. Because they are priced higher and they should be priced higher because it, you know, it takes a lot of skill to make those things. Until I can afford to buy one of those things, I got my little thrifted tool belt. Next leather item. I started playing Animal Crossing. I know I'm 40 years old and I just now started playing Animal Crossing, but my island's coming along okay. I have a house, but I have kind of been diving into Animal Crossing core or like cottage core, like what people wear that it is into Animal Crossing. And I come across this cute leather leather again a leaf backpack that i want to make myself i was toying around with should i make it with like wax canvas or should i try to upcycle a leather purse and so i'm going to try to upcycle a leather purse because i got one it is 100 percent leather the straps are leather it has this lovely brass metal work it does need to be cleaned up it's kind of it's dirty not gonna lie it, this might satisfy my diy animal crossing cottage four leafy backpack dream so i'm excited to get started with this so keep an eye out on a video so my daughter and i love broadway shows we when we went to new york city last month we went to go see a beetlejuice we went to go see hamilton when it came to st louis a couple of months ago I am also a huge history nerd. My daughter and I were gifted tickets to go see Six the Musical because they're coming to St. Louis and I'm really excited. Last time I went to a musical when I went to go see Hamilton, I dressed up like Eliza, which I'll post a video uh, about that later, but here's a picture of me dressed up as Eliza. I wanted to dress up as Catherine of Aragon, but I only had like a month and now I only have three weeks to do it. So I'm like, uh, I, I have a lot of stuff to do with my business and other like crafty things. I don't need to get into that rabbit hole. But my daughter came up to me in the middle of the bench. She's like, mom, look what I found you. <laughs> and she, I, I, I blame her because I wasn't even going to, to dress up like her. But look, <laughs> she, I don't know how she found this, but she found this. It's leather, you guys. It's leather and crochet. It's a leather sweatshirt. It's it smells bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean it up. I'm going to paint these little triangles gold, and I'm gonna put studs on it. And I'm going to do not a direct copy of what she wears in Six of the Musical, but I'm gonna do like a like a six bound. Is that a thing? I also found in the bins. I cannot believe it's it's faded. It's faded because I found also these studded bracelet bands. No, if I'm going to make this into a jacket, if I'm gonna keep it a sweatshirt, I do have in my crafty stash a thrifted black leather jacket that I was going to save to make like bat, bat wings because I'm a huge uh, Akatar fan. I was gonna make um, bat boys wings, but I think I might sacrifice that for this my Catherine Bound book. I don't know how to clean that. I'm gonna have to Google like how to clean leather with that and and my purse. Okay, so my next item is a vintage Christmas. It's really, it's really cool. It has these green bows on a red background with I'm guessing tree branches on it. And it has these pom poms. I, I couldn't pass it up. It's a homemade tablecloth. I might use this for Christmas time or I might use this for a holiday skirt. I'm not sure. So my next thing is an, another tablecloth. And this is screening Edwardian lingerie dress to me because of the insertion lace. I love it. I'm not sure if I have enough material here to make an actual dress, at least enough of a material to make like an Edwardian dress. So I will probably make a 70s does Edwardian outfit. Insertion lace, it's coming back. My next item is a shirt. It's just a cute little shirt. It kind of reads cottage core Outlander kind of because it does have that scoop neck. I love that it has these knife pleats, not knife pleats. What do you call those? Pin tucks with these cute little buttons and these cute little uh, detailed at the arms. Liked it. It's definitely my color and for a dollar or something. It's mine. All the wool coats that I wanted to save, 
let's just have a moment for for all the wool and all the tweed coats that I wanted to save that I couldn't justify in saving. I hope somebody saves them. I hope they just don't go into the landfill because they were really, really nice coats, but I just don't have enough space to go save them or know what to do with them after I get them. So if you have any ideas about how to upcycle wool coats, as well as like tweed blazers, there are so many tweed blazers, my friends. I just don't have the time to do them. So let me know down in the comments below if you have some ideas to how to upcycle those types of things. So I did manage to get one wool coat because I need a long wool coat to keep me warm in the winter time, especially when I go to the theater. I'm feeling that I need to do some alterations in this coat though. But it is nice. Look, look at it. Look at it. It is from the brand Aldolfo Classics. It is was made in Ukraine. It's 100% wool. I am guessing it is from the 90s because of the boxy cut of it as well as the shoulder pads although they did shoulder pads pre 90s i don't think it was made after the 90s so if it was made in the 80s i'm not sure it definitely needs to be cleaned it has some give to, for me to make it longer i'm excited for that hopefully i can figure out how to make it wearable for me before the winter is over the next items i have are cozy wools the amount of wools that you can find at a Goodwill or in, even in the Goodwill outlets if you're willing to dig is crazy and I love it because these wools I have wool and cashmere yes I found cashmere at the bins my friends it's just it's crazy that they're uh, considered luxury fibers only because it costs a little bit more than say rayon polyester or acrylic that fast fashion manufacturers like to use today. They're not very affordable or attainable if you buy them brand new, but definitely you can find a lot of them in the Goodwills. I'm actually wearing a merino sweater that I found at the Goodwill for less than $5. Thrifted a lot of cashmere and merino this winter. If you want me to do a video about how I am able to find all of these luxury fibers in the Goodwills, let me know and I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to that video as soon as I can. So let me show you my granny car, my granny core cardigans first. So the first up, this is the cardigan that I'm not too sure about, but it's this beautiful color work, gray, green, white, and pink. It is from the brand Erin Crafts. It's made in Ireland and it's 100% merino wool. And I wasn't quite too sure about this yet because I'm not sure if it is too granny for me, but it's thick and comfy and it's merino wool and you don't generally find the chunkier merino wool in this size in the commercial brands so it's very nice you usually find them in a, like a really really fine gauge it's not itchy at all but I'm just not sure about the pink and green I don't know let me know if you think I should keep it my next thing is bright pink and it's 100% wool and it is just lovely I'm thinking Right now, it is very much reading like 1990s businesswoman, <laughs> but I'm thinking if I change out the buttons and do some cute little embroidery on it, it could go to Hot Granny Chic. It has this lovely like scalloped edge on it and it's just, again, it's 100% wool. This is like a felted wool and it's just really nice. It's warm. I live in the Midwest, so it gets really cold in the winters and just these nice cozy warm wool things are just nice. My next thing is outfit is something that I'm really sad about because it's too big. This is a unique find that you don't really see in, in anywhere because true vintage wool vests are just hard to find, especially ones that don't have holes all over it. But this is a vintage, I'm not even sure what era, maybe 60s, maybe 50s, I'm not sure. I'm thinking about 50s or 60s because of the label. Um, it's by P PhD Philosophy Address. It's 100% fine lambs wool and it's, it's such a pretty vest. It's giving me whiskey grandpa vibes. But as you can see, it is a little bit too big like a lot it would be really cute with high-waisted jeans or like a brown sweater on somebody so I'm thinking about passing this on but I love just the color of 
of this. I'm generally not an olive green fan, but this one is just very, very pretty. And, and you guys, it has pockets, cute little pockets, and they're like reinforced pockets. So yeah, I'm kind of disappointed it doesn't fit me, but whoever the, the new owner of it is going to be is going to be very, very happy. <laughs> I found, you guys, I was digging, digging, and I found this, and I like felt, I'm like, ooh, that feels nice. Let me look at the tag. Like, I went to go look inside of it, and out pops gloves. My friends, these are cashmere gloves and a matching hat. Can you believe that? Like, cashmere. It's so, so nice. I'm not gonna put the hat on because I have not washed this yet. And not even sure if the hat's gonna fit my head because I have a big head. But the gloves, the gloves are like a dream. I couldn't even, oh. Now I could probably knit gloves, like cashmere gloves like this, but if you've ever priced brand new cashmere, it's expensive, my friends. And if I can find them, already made I mean I don't mind I just want to get these they're like buttery soft if you do not own any cashmere at home go thrifting there's a lot of cashmere out there my friends go thrifting and treat yourself because everyone especially if you live in a cold environment during the winter time everybody deserves to have a nice cashmere piece just a even if you want to like hug it <laughs> it's like a it's, an, it's like and like the best hug possible my mother ended up going with us yesterday and she came up to me and held this up. She's like, Serena, what is this? And it turned out to be a affinity scarf. I'm like, it's an affinity scarf. And she's like, how do you wear it? I'm like, like this. And she's like, oh, I don't want it. I'm like, what? So I felt it. I'm like, mom. So I looked, I looked at the tag. It's 90% wool and 10% cashmere. It's wool and cashmere. And it's wool and cashmere and I don't know what type of wool is in here. It's really really soft wool or maybe that 10 percent cashmere is just making it really soft it's so nice so nice next item i'm kind of mad at myself now that i bought this but it was a dollar what did i say a dollar 89 a dollar 87 per piece i probably should have passed on it but it, i it got in my cart anyways so it's just a plain gray knitted sweater from lance and it is a double xl so it is a nice big weight there are some pills on this, but it's 100% cotton. And the reason why I grabbed this is because I plan on knitting a couple of cotton t-shirt and tanks this summer. That the amount of yarn that I would get from this double XL sweater would be wonderful. And I normally don't buy like large sizes just to repurpose and upcycle unless I know that it is the final sale and that I am either going to go into the landfill or if it is going to be packaged up and sent to a third world country. So I generally leave the bigger pieces on the rack for those of you that need, that are looking for those bigger items, especially those bigger items that are quality. But because these were at the bins, generally the next step from the bins is either into the landfill or they auction them off as like big, huge units and ship them to third world country and Shipping and clothing to third world countries is, n is not very good for their economy either. So, all right, so my last piece of clothing item is a, you guessed it, another sweater. It is 100% cashmere, again, cashmere. It is a polo by Ralph Lauren cashmere sweater. It's a medium sweater. It's a pretty nice sweater by itself. It is like these delicate cables, but it does have a couple of holes in it that I could probably fix. There's a hole in the neckline, and I believe I saw a hole, yeah. Generally, you'll find holes in sweaters like where the belly area is, right where it like rubs up against your button. Those holes aside, I still bought it for $1.87 because I am planning on, you guessed it again, upcycling this yarn. I have, and I, I know I'm talking about a lot of upcycling yarn, in this video, I have yet to practice it. I have yet to even try it. I probably have five sweaters that I want to upcycle and harvest the yarn from. So I'm going to make a video on process of me actually doing that. This may or may not work. I don't know, but for $1.87, I will try to harvest me some cashmere off of this. And if not, I, I believe I could probably use the pieces of the yarn and felt it up and make something really cool with it. But 
Again, it's cashmere, it's soft. If I were to go to my local yarn shop, I would probably spend like 200 to $250 on yarn to have a sweater quantities worth of yarn to make, which I would love to go into my local yarn store and drop $250 on a sweater, but I could spend that $250 and buy like different types of yarns besides just one solid piece of cashmere. So I'm going to try it. We'll see how it goes for $1.87. I think it's worth it. Okay, my friends, the last but not least piece of item is my heavy item thing that I only pay $10 for. And if you are a vintage enthusiast as well as a sewing enthusiast, you are going to love this. It is heavy, my friends. It is heavy. Ooh, ready? One, two, three. It is a vintage Singer sewing machine. Oh, and it is in my favorite color. It's in baby blue. My friends, uh, the story behind this, my mother and I and my daughter ended up arriving at the bin store at like 1250. And as soon as we walked in and started looking through our first bins, we heard the announcement saying that, hey customers, you have 10 minutes to shop. We're shutting down at one o'clock. You can come back at three. I'm like, crap. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to find my mom. So I was walking to go find my mom, and I spied this baby just sitting on top. I'm like, and I debated, I'm like, well, I could probably leave it and come back, and it'll probably still be here if I get here. But like, nope, I'm not going to, I'm not going to risk it. So I, I grabbed it, stood in line. $10 was well worth it. I am so excited. I've been sewing on a very, very cheap Singer machine that I bought. 12 years ago for like $70 and it has been it's lasted me for this long and I haven't really done any maintenance or anything so I just have a special place in my heart for sneakers and to find a vintage machine I'm so excited. I'm not sure if it works. I think it works. I plugged it in yesterday and the power works on it. I believe it or not it actually had the foot pedal. It's not shipped, the, the plastic on it is not broken. How it survived its trip to the bins, I have no idea because a lot of the stuff do not survive living in those bins because they get beat up a lot. So I'm going to try to find a manual for it and take the time. I might research and see if there's anybody local to me that can do a maintenance on it to get it working because I really don't want to mess this up because it's a really special sewing machine. Well, that's it, my friends, to my impromptu share with you my trip to the bins. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've made it this far, you are awesome. Ideas about anything that I could do with any of the stuff that I got today, I would love to hear your feedback because I want to make use of these things. I don't want to just, you know, go out and buy, buy, buy just because things are cheap. If you like videos like this, um, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure I make more thrifting videos. I thrift a lot. I just don't always share all of the thrifting things that I get, especially, I probably should though because I feel like I, I've learned a lot thrifting over the years, especially about thrifting luxury fibers. So I hope you guys are all doing well and I will see you guys next time. Thank you. I think I'll chew in. Yeah.